Welcome to uh, Larson Hicks's podcast, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is my YouTube channel where I talk about whatever it is I want to talk about with uh, people that are smarter than me more often than not. Um, and today I've got one of those people, uh, my old boss, Mr. Andrew Krapischetz. Great to have you on the show, sir. Nice to see you, and thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So um, Andrew and I go way back. Um, I worked for Andrew at originally what was called CC Benefits, um, and uh, in a small little office over there, played some played some uh, some uh, wiffle ball in the parking lot behind that building. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think there were little like 10, ball, 15 little employees. Ping pong. We, it was a lot we of basically fun. just played more. I, I we yeah. did get some work done. We got a lot of work mm-hmm. done. Um, we got to start off off the ground, but yeah, we did, right. we did have some good times. Yep, that's right. <laughs> so Andrew, um, Andrew is the CEO of that company. Grew it a lot. Um, spun off some companies and uh, eventually exited. And um, and uh, the company is still still growing and still thriving. Um, but Andrew, uh, you you got out of the company. How long ago was it now? Uh, nine months ago. Not even a year. That's crazy. No. Yeah. Wow. No, it is. <laughs> it's been it's it's been a little wild. It's been a wild ride. Well, so I'm I'm really interested in having you on the show here because because you and I um, got to reconnect at uh, the Fight Laugh Feast conference in mm-hmm. uh, Lebanon, Tennessee, back in October, and you know that our paths diverged. I I went off and and kind of did my own thing and ended up in Alabama of all places and. Uh, and am now involved in uh, have been involved now in, in entrepreneurship and, and running a business for the last several years. And I've just, you know, my, my own views on entrepreneurship and investing and venture capital and all that stuff have, have kind of evolved, you know, over time. And um, I've been a part of, you know, MZ when, when your company was, was acquired by private equity or, or was, you know, had private equity investment and, and then was acquired a couple of times while I was there. And then was a part of another company that had similar, you know, had a similar trajectory. And I came out the other end feeling like, okay, there's there's some interesting things here, some some interesting patterns. Um, and uh, and so I was I was really pleasantly surprised when I heard you talk um, back in uh, back in October that it seems like maybe we've arrived at a lot of the same conclusions um, about a lot of this stuff. So maybe before we do that, because I, I want to dive kind of deeper into entrepreneurship. And what I kind of call the uh, the um, the corporate uh, rat race. But before we get into all that, I'd love to just I'd love to just real quick for people who aren't familiar with you, where do you live? What are you doing right now? You've got this big awesome sign behind you. It says Red Balloon. Yeah. What's that? Give us give us the background. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I grew up in San Francisco Bay Area. I did the dot com thing there. I was then an early adopter of getting out of California. And I uh, realized nice. that the dot-com world, and I was part of a company that got uh, $32 million or so of venture capital money. Wow. And I turned 21 on an expense account um, and also learned how to waste other people's money um, and how yeah. to not do some of that, hopefully, uh, when it's your own money um, or other people's money. So right. uh, moved up to Moscow, Idaho. Because I wanted to go to a church, I looked around. There weren't a lot of great jobs. And so I thought, well... If God's given me skills, I should use them to bless other people. So uh, I started a company. Uh, see, well, I partnered with two economists to start a company. I'll say they had a little consulting firm, um, and they let me uh, turn it into a real company. And um, and one of our first goals was 50 people earning over $50,000 a year, 50 to 50, because we thought if we can do that, and that's not a really good business goal, but it is a good life goal, um, sure. is if we can do that, we can actually move the needle on this little economy here in Moscow, Idaho. So um, over the years, God's blessed me a lot. And so I have started, uh, I helped start that company. I helped start a company called Populi, which we ended up selling to the employees helped start a company called Element Robot, which we ended up selling to Stryker. It was a 3D printing business. Yeah, that's cool. Um, ended up um, selling MZ four different times, and I feel like I'm that guy that sells the bridge to multiple people. Like, hey, would you like to buy it too? Uh, so I sold it four different times, um, and it's fun to do exits. It's fun to get big checks. The bad news is you also lose control in the process. So yeah. um, the last round 
We had uh, a board that decided that I was a little too conservative and a little too Christian for their liking. Um, and so um, they actually told me, you are welcome to be a CEO who is a Christian, more of a happens to be a Christian. You are not welcome to be a Christian CEO. Mm, I'm like, oh, well, at least you understand the difference, and I'm out. So yeah. uh, I found myself delightfully unemployed, and I have a housing development going. I have a bunch of commercial buildings here, so I have um, more to say grace over than I had time for anyway. But a friend kind of dared me. They're like, hey, you should start a job board locally. Um, and I'm uh, always one to take on a good dare. And so I'm like, oh, sure, fine. It's not that big a deal uh, to build a website and have a local job board. So redballoon.work. Right. The reason it's called Red Balloon is because if you've ever been in a hot air balloon, it's a little bit terrifying and it's a lot bit fun. Um, in fact, I was in a hot air balloon in England and Dartmoor. And like it was super fun. It's relaxing. And then he's like, okay, on the landing, I need you to pin all your children to the side of the basket in case we have a crash landing. You're their seatbelt. <laughs> Like, excuse me? He's like, yeah, ready? Here we go. I'm like, yes. So, yeah, so just like looking for a new job, a little bit terrifying, a lot bit fun. So, um, and people are moving to red states or red regions of blue states to find freedom right now, right? You think of those like old uh, Germany movies where they like build a hot air balloon and go over the wall. Like it kind of feels like that a little bit um, as people are leaving New York or Seattle or all of those big woke organizations and big woke region so and then red balloon dot work because dot com sounds like communist doesn't it like you've never thought of that before but com sounds communist and so yeah, yeah. dot work like we're going to work we're not going to be communist so yeah, there yeah, it is yeah. red balloon dot work so uh, it's a matchmaking service for uh, conservative businesses and conservative job seekers ta-da that's it that's amazing well it's very cool i know i know um you've been getting tons of tons of uh of interest and publicity and and uh it makes perfect sense it's been this this last these last couple of years have been such a crazy, crazy uh, time, and uh, and so many have been. Uh, there's just been so much migration, you know, for work. Just people trying to find employers who um, aren't uh, aren't woke and aren't aren't. We we have a bunch of those here in, in Huntsville, Alabama. Our church has grown tremendously in our in really our first year and a half of existence, and uh, and a lot of them are people who've moved from. New York, New Hampshire, you know, um, California, just people who are like, man, I just want to work somewhere where I don't have to like, you know, know, swallow hook, line and sinker, all of this woke nonsense. Yeah, no, and it really is woke nonsense. And I think a lot of people have no idea how bad it is. I mean, you hear what's happening at Disney right now. Uh, A report came out today that American Express is one of the worst woke businesses and they really are pushing CRT training. I talked to wow. one lady who's actually at Deloitte and she's like, yeah, I just finished a two hour CRT training where I was told that I was evil because I was white. She's like, so that's hugely motivating. Yeah, what a blessing. Uh, I feel like productivity was through the roof after that meeting. And then the manager kind of gets up and says, you know, I wish all those unvaccinated people would go to an island together and die. I'm like, Wow. Americans saying that to each other. Fantastic. Sounds like a win. And so, but there was this moment where she's like, and she's like, I've just always kept my head down as kind of a conservative Christian. And I'm like, you know what? It's time. So she's like, hey, I'm not going to get a vaccine. And she says, the room just like dead quiet, right? But then another person's like, yeah, me neither. And then another person's like, yeah, I'm not going to do the, do the shot. And it's and I think it's a lesson that conservatives we're the largest yeah. ideological group in America and the least totally. likely to say anything, right? Totally. And that's the problem. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, you know, if we can have Red Balloon be an opportunity that if people at Deloitte or Disney or American Express stand up, actually have an opinion, uh, and lose their job or don't get a promotion because of it, there are other companies out there that are willing to hire them. Totally. Um, and and then the companies that are on Red Balloon. You got to sign a pledge that hey, you care about the Constitution and you care about freedom, um, but you're going to get access to like the best employees, right? And we all know that yeah. when you have someone yeah. that's in your HR department whining all the time about all the things they don't have, not productive, right? right? But when you have people who are like, hey, what if I just worked and wanted to bless my customers or you bless your customers? Um, those are the best kind of people. So yeah, and it'll be really interesting as conservatives are moving to conservative businesses. Um, and you have liberals that are staying in liberal businesses, at some point they're going to devour each other. So yeah. I don't know. It'll be, it'll be interesting times that we live in. Yeah. No, no, without a doubt. 
Well, I think it's very cool, Andrew, and I'm excited about it. Um, I, I think uh, there's a lot of different things you've said so far, just as part of your story and intro to Red Balloon that, that are that are interesting and worth maybe going down some rabbit trails. One is I think um, I think it's you know those of us in our you and I belong to a very small kind of subculture that um, in the the CREC um, you know this this uh, kind of niche Reform Presbyterian crew. Um, and, uh, and, um, but, but for those that are in this, in this, uh, this sort of movement, so to speak, um, we know that what's happening right now in Moscow is really crazy. Um, just a a massive migration of people to this little town and, and just an, a tremendous amount of output from Canon press and, and, uh, and the different ministries based out of their logos, um, and your goal for 50 employees earning 50,000 to me i think i think a lot of people probably underestimate how central that work um has been to the success of of the uh, of all of those ministries um and and it's something that i that i think um christians you know christians are really excited about supporting ministry really excited about you know going to church and and uh, and all of that, but um, but there aren't a whole lot of Christians who are thinking. Well, what if I could, you know, what if I could employ fifty people, um, you know, who who could live in our church and build families here and contribute? Um, you, know, you need. Yeah. You, we all need. We all need to make a living. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And and a job is such a really interesting thing, right? Obviously, the Dominion mandate uh, makes it clear to us that we should be working. Um, Adam had a job in the Garden of Eden before sin, right? So right. it's not right. uh, is, a, is a good thing. It's part of the reason I did dot work for redbloom.work because, um, you know, work is redeeming. Um, we right. are reversing the curse with our labors, yeah. um, and it's a really good thing to do. But also, um, it really is a defining feature of someone's life, right? When you meet someone new, you ask them, like, hey, what do you do? Right, and that right. question betrays that a, a job is not a nine-to-five hobby that you happen to get paid for. Um, it is right. part of um, the Dominion mandate. It's part of um, actually who you are. Right, your yeah. job is who you are. And so, if you can provide people the opportunity to really live their best life um, and and do great work and be able to fulfill, you know, that desire for prosperity for their family, then yeah. they can also go out and do other things. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, you know. If you can provide a great income, well, guess what? Uh, a mom can stay home with the kids, or you can send your kids to a private education, or you can help fund that church building, or you yep. can help fund other ministries, right? And so jobs are really part of the engine that allows good Christian communities to thrive. And so yep. um, this is what I've always been passionate about. And if you can create wealth for individuals, then they can do stuff with it. And we can not right. just kind of – we can uh, get back in the driver's seat on our culture. Totally. Yeah, the thing that the thing uh, that was really kind of um, life changing for me. I've kind of talked about some of this on this channel before, but but I was, um, you know, I was kind of hard charging after the traditional entrepreneur kind of I, what what I now call shorthand call the the corporate rat race, and it's like mm -hmm. this idea that you you raise a bunch of money, um, the product is really the company. It's not like the the thing that you're that you're actually selling to customers. You're trying to paint this picture of this thing that's growing, that's got this kind of exit velocity or whatever, and you're and you're um, you know you're you go from angel to private equity to venture capital or whatever, and it's and at each stage, you know it's like the you know um, you're trying to you're you're getting better and better at selling the company, like you've you've gotten better and better at making the company itself look more and more valuable. But it doesn't necessarily ever at any point necessarily in that process are you actually delivering uh, more value to more people. And that that, that yeah. can and should be happening, but it's not necessarily a, a hard requirement. Um, yeah. it, it, I mean, y y you're going to run out of money eventually if you don't if you don't do something that people are willing to pay you for. But but in the in kind of the valuation framework profits not not really a great thing it's actually viewed at least in an early stage company as a really negative thing right i know i know no and this is you know i've again i've been blessed with a bunch of exits yeah um, and um, 
by the grace of God, I'd love to never do an exit again. Uh, yeah. Which, when I tell people that, they're like, "Whoa, wait a minute! There's, you know, you get a lot of liquidity. Yeah, you do. You lose a lot of control." Um, and I would love to build businesses that my kids can work in, and that my yeah. kids can run, and that okay. my grandkids can work in. Right? How do we think more generationally? Uh, and there's a reason that big bad private equity buys these businesses, right? They're buying it for a reason because they think they can make more money with it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you look at some of the businesses that I've been able to start and run over the years, uh, throwing off millions of dollars of cash at this point, and like, well, what if we had never sold them? What if yeah. we, you know? Um, I think when I first sold MZ, um, I learned a lot from those private equity guys. They kind of put me through totally. the MBA, um, totally. uh, which is great, right? And yeah. so they're, you know, don't take it as like, hey, all exits are bad exits. Sure. Uh, but I do think that there's a world in which when you see Christians who instead of having uh, good conservative businesses bought and turned woke by big yeah. bad private equity, why aren't we buying businesses and turning them conservative, turning totally. them Christian, totally. um, and really installing some of these principles? Because the reality is, I was talking to Robert, in, uh, who started a company, an organization called Inspire in mm -hmm. Boise, and basically does biblically responsible investing. Mm -hmm. um, and he built an index of all of the publicly traded companies, which ones are um, you know doing the best things, not supporting Planned Parenthood, not supporting Gay Pride Day. Yeah. Um, and doing good stuff, right? Not just not doing bad stuff. Yep. And, and his thesis is um, the companies that are glorifying to God will be blessed by God. Totally. And and I think that's true, right? Yep. And so um, if we understand the creator of the universe, there, then we should be better at business. Um, and there's no reason that we should give up control of those businesses. We should be looking for ways to bless our communities, to grow people up, grow CEOs up, to yeah. be able to run these businesses and go with them. So, totally. um, again, I'm uh, a, at the ripe old age of 44. Um, I'm ready to see how many businesses I can create that yeah. I hold on to and hand down to good Christians to run yeah. um, before I die. That's amazing. I, it, the, the, so, so one of the things about um, there's the, the, just the word job, I, I think job in and of itself is connotes like, a, uh, a task, you know, it, it, it's just a task that you're doing for somebody else. Um, and, and, uh, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with the job. We all have to learn skills. Um, it, it, you know, usually always working for someone else. Like that's, it's not a bad thing. And I also mm -hmm. think that, that we tend to be very impatient, you know, about the American dream is like, Hey, go seize, the universe, you be the next Steve Jobs tomorrow. Like if, right. if you don't do that, the microwave you're failure. Culture that we're in. Yeah. Right. Right. But, but I do really think that, um, like I've been totally brainwashed now by CR Wiley and, and all the stuff that he's written on the household. Cause I, I, I think it's, it's, it's just total paradigm shift for me. This idea that, um, that the institution of the household is this fundamental, building block of society that has totally been eroded um, as both mom and dad have, have sort of abandoned this this organization that they both have a 50-50 share in. They've abandoned it to go work for some other man's household um, in which they have no equity, in which they themselves right. you know, don't don't get to get to carry any equity and, and pass it on. Um, and so the idea of of uh, side hustles and of finding ways to build build your own business, um, I think is I think is something you know I, I'm in the staffing business, not not the exact same thing that you're doing, but I'm I'm definitely in a business where I'm I'm helping people get jobs, but I'm also constantly trying to encourage the people I work with to look for ways to kind of unplug from the matrix, unplug from the corporate you know rat race, and start to build yep. their own households. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'd, I'd say step one is you're going to, you got to clear the fog. And sometimes step yep. one is going and finding a Christian yep. or a conservative organization to work for totally. um, so that you can actually think clearly. I was talking yep. to a couple actually at the fight, laugh, feast conference. Um, and, and, you know, and that, at that moment, red balloon was less than a month old. 
Um, yeah. So it was brand spanking new. Yeah. Um, and but this guy comes up to me with his wife and um, at at the little booth that we had there at Fight Laugh Feast, and he says, yeah. you know, hey, I've, I'm in Dallas, Texas. Um, I've been working for a company for ten years that really just hated my worldview. Um, yeah. And you just come, hey, and he's like, I've been wearing a mask at work. Yeah. Um, they're talking about vaccine mandates. Like it's just like bleh. Right. Yeah. And the employer made it clear that we don't like you. We just like that you're providing a bunch of value for us. Right. You're creating a bunch yeah. of wealth for another household. Right. Right. And so so he goes on Red Balloon, finds a job with a Christian employer and his wife gives me this big old bear hug. And she's like, look, the situation is this. Um, he comes home satisfied and fulfilled yeah. and is able to provide, you know, cause not everybody can start their own business, but totally. yeah. everybody can have the bravery and the courage to leave the terrible business you're working for. If you remember, yeah. I think it was like nine months ago, maybe six months ago, there was that uh, video game CEO in Atlanta, Georgia, and he tweeted a positive thing about the Texas heartbeat bill. Uh, if you remember that and his no. board fired him the next day, right? Wow. Um, and I had a number of Christians text me like, man, we're losing our people in power. I'm like, no, 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 hard stop. Think about it like this. That man who has a lot of skills has been using his talents to make money for people who hate life. Yeah, for right? sure. And God is redeploying him totally. to go and use his talents for people who don't hate life. Yeah, right. Really sure. straightforward. So whether you're starting your own business, um, you should absolutely be using your money and your labor to um, bless God's people um, yeah. and not um, bless um, companies that just hate who you are and what you think. Right. Totally. And that is hard step. If you're totally. at a big, high paying company, yeah. um, I have an employee here at, uh, at at Red Balloon who is a GE Health. And he's okay. like, just every day, he said he actually told his kids, like, hey, kids, I'm going to work today. I might step on a pronoun landmine. And if I do, I'm going to come home unemployed. That's right. just the way right. it is. Um, and so uh, this is really exciting, Larson, because this yeah. is, uh, you know, this is one of the biggest shows in America that we're on right now today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I'm announcing we uh, launched a video game at Red Balloon Work today oh, called wow. Pronoun Landmines. Um, so his 13 year old son awesome. wrote a game called pronoun landmines. And if you go to red balloon dot work right now, um, you're going to be able to see a little link there to go play pronoun landmines. It's a, oh a really simple game. You just have to avoid the pronoun landmines. And if you hit one, you're going to get fired and that's it. Really straightforward. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh my so, gosh. Anyway. Man. Yeah. Big, big it. news from red balloon. I love um, it. All right. But, you heard it here. Yeah. yeah you heard it here. here but, first. but here's that's the thing awesome. is like, you you need to you need to be brave. You need to have yeah. courage, and you need to you need to stand for what you know you believe. And yeah. if it costs you your job, it costs you your job. Yeah. Um, and it would be better to you know what does Proverbs say? It's better to uh, be poor and righteous mm -hmm. than in a house of feasting um, yeah. with wickedness. And yeah. so uh, totally. I think it's time for conservatives to wake up, um, walk away from that massive paycheck. Um, and you might be surprised. God often yeah. blesses faithfulness, and sometimes you get a paycheck you weren't expecting. Yeah. First, you have to have faith. First, you have yeah. to have courage. Totally. Um, and so, um, anyway, that's what we're trying to facilitate. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, you know, Lord well, willing, we can. Yeah, God is good, man. And I, I uh, you know, I, my wife and I have taken a, a bunch of risks in our in our kind of journey, and um, and it, there's been a lot of just leaps of faith, and and. Uh, and we've seen it with a lot of our friends too. And, it, and, and, you know, God promises that he takes care of his people. He's a good father and he loves us and, and he, he provides for the sparrows and, and, uh, and the lilies of the field and how much more so does he provide for his people. And especially when you're, you know, you're not being, um, you're not being, um, stubborn or, or foolish, uh, but you're, you're wisely saying so. So just an example We've got a, a family in our, that just joined our church this last week. Uh, nine kids. Dude's been a air traffic controller for uh, for his whole career. He's like fifty, um, and he was like, "Man, this this lifestyle, this culture, and now this woke stuff and this vaccination stuff. All of it's just gotten it's gotten to a point to where it. I just can't. I've got this family I got to care for, and I just can't handle it. And so he just pulled the trigger and 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 quit." And moved south. Just was like, yeah, I'm going to going to a red state, going to Alabama, and ended up here. Found our church the first Sunday they were here. Like didn't didn't even come from our background at all, but just kind of found us, and then found an awesome job, and is crushing it now, and yep. providing for his family, and and even crazier stuff. I mean, just 
there were some needs of theirs that, that weren't being met, um, you know, kind of spiritually and, 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 uh, counseling wise with family members that, uh, that are being met here, you know, that they didn't even know that God was relocating them, not mm-hmm. just, not just to find a better, you know, a job, but, but actually to find, you know, a, the, the right place for yeah, their family. So, yeah. so yeah, I think, yeah. I think uh, taking that leap of faith and uh, being willing to, you know, God's, you know, uh, something I think I learned from Tim Ferriss, I think it was in his, I think it was in his four hour work week book was people fear the unknown, you know, more than, yeah. more than the known. Right. And, and a lot yep. of times we don't do the, we don't do the, the work to just turn the unknown into the known. Okay. Let's just yep. walk this through. What's the absolute worst. It's the absolute worst case scenario. If I quit my job, like what's the absolute worst thing that can happen. And when you start right. to think about for most of us, it's like I might end up in my parents' basement, you know, right. for 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 a few months, you know, while I'm yeah. delivering pizzas and applying for jobs. Like, I can I can live with that. Like, that's not that big a right. deal, you know. Yep. Um, but I think that the fear of the unknown, and we're so we're so programmed um, these days by the sort of mantra of like having a plan and having a secure job and having insurance that mm-hmm. um, that it's just it, it just feels terrifying the idea of 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 like quitting a job yeah well and i think also conservatives on average are the best people at growing numb to pain right we can yeah. we can walk with a rock in our shoe a lot longer than most people yeah um, because we're like okay we're just being sanctified like you know and so i think there's a lot of people at these large companies who are just like you know i'm just numb to the pain and so my hope is that they wake up and realize no there is a better way um, and it's not just about you. It's not just about your paycheck. You're supporting something. Um, and this is uh, Robert at yep. Inspire. You know, he's, he was the head of investment banking for Wells Fargo in Carmel, California, right? Okay. So wow. um, working with very wealthy people. And he said he woke up one day and realized that he had positions in three companies that made abortion drugs. Hmm. Right? He's like, so I'm making a return on my investment every time a mom kills hmm. her baby. Yeah. Sucks. Right. And just let that settle in for a minute. Like it doesn't matter what returns you're getting, right? Yeah. It shouldn't matter what returns you're getting. And so, you know, he went through this big thing, really painful. He said, you know, our family was, uh, you know, baked potatoes and ramen for a couple of years, but now he has an organization that has multiple publicly traded ETFs. Um, and, um, they have more than a billion dollars that are being run through biblically responsible investment, right? And that's okay. one of many, many stories. And you all need to know that, like, it's possible. It's possible to go out there and do something great, and it's really hard totally. and really painful. And God builds you up through that, yeah. right? You think about right. those risks. When you take them, it, it, God, God cares more about the players than the score. Um, yeah. So go yeah. get it. Well, the thing the thing that you said earlier that, that I, I think just kind of – trying to cast a vision here maybe for people listening to this and thinking about what well, maybe I, I need to go on red balloon and, and start thinking about pulling, you know, unplugging. Um, one of the things you said is not everyone's, not everyone's got the skills, um, or the know how to, to, to go out and start a business, um, yep. on day one, maybe, maybe later in life after you've learned some things or whatever. My, my own personal journey was I ended up at a, uh, I, you know, I worked for you for a long time, which was an yeah. awesome place for me to just learn about culture and about a lot, of, a lot of great things about business. Um, and then I ended up at a company here. Um, I think three of the four executives in the companies in the company were elders at their various churches, and were just phenomenal men. Just each, yeah. each of them, excellent men that I just learned a lot from as as men, just the way they carried themselves, the way they lived their lives, and the way they ran the business. And so. I got this, you know, as an employee, but I got this front row seat um, to 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 seeing how godly Christian men run a company and fight with each other in a healthy way and make difficult decisions, and, you know, and argue in a healthy way. Um, and and I felt like that all sort of inspired me, you know, to, to even even more to want to go out and do this someday. Um, but I got to a point. I had this opportunity. This is what I want to kind of dig a little deeper into. We've alluded to it a couple times, but. Um, I, I was about to take a job at this um, startup incubator that ha- was connected to an angel fund, and we were going to start a bunch of companies. And um, and I was thankfully uh, sort of diverted from that um, and ended up in this job I'm in now. But 
uh, one of the things I, I, I realized over over time was that it takes virtue, it takes discipline, hard work, thrift, um, good decision making. It, you know, it takes all of these things, people skills, to create a business that's valuable. And when we turn around and sell those companies that we that that are created through virtue, it's like all of these private equity and venture capital companies exist to sort of extract the wealth from virtuous people, you know, mm-hmm. and, and sort of relocate it into, um, into the hands of people that aren't, aren't virtuous. And, yeah. and it seems mm-hmm. like, like we've got to stop that, that pattern, uh, mm-hmm. in, in the church. Yeah, no, that's actually interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way, but it also, you know, reminds me about what a lot of conservatives are doing with their kids and what a lot of Christians are yeah. doing with their kids. Yeah, right? that's right. We're, we're raising great kids and then we send them off to the government school system to basically hand them over. Okay, we made a bunch of great resources for you to have. That's right. Yeah, um, and, totally right. and we need to stop doing that, right? We need to stop doing that with their businesses, with our kids, um, and we need to, um, you know, be in a yeah. be in a position where we can uh, keep our hands on the reins um, because um, God's asked us to do it, so we need to do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, it, it, another thing about all of this that that I think is, um, you know, I, I think that the idea of inheritance has become mm-hmm. Like the the when I hear inheritance in a modern context, it usually just means after my parents die, when I myself am, am very old, um, it's whatever money's left after we've liquidated all their assets and paid off the the nursing home, and and that's right. basically all that an inheritance is. It's not really all that interesting or exciting. Where when you look at you know even the parable of the prodigal son and and. The, their concept of inheritance is very, very different. It, it seemed to be something that you are coming into as a young man. You're actually mm-hmm. taking possession of inheritance as a young man, um, and uh, and and it is your it is the thing that you do with your life. Um, and so that that idea that that um, you know people complain a lot about. Well, our kids go off. You know, our kids. Everyone's nomadic. You just, you know, you go to college and then you just go chase whatever career opportunity is out there. Um, I wish my kids would stay. And uh, the thing to me, the response is, well, what would they stay for? Like, give mm-hmm. them something to stay for. Do they have an inheritance right. in your household? Or have you been laboring for the last 20, 30 years of your life in somebody, in some other person, you know, some other kid's inheritance, you know, building yeah. it up for them? Does that make sense? Well, yeah, absolutely. And it's also super satisfying because here at Red Balloon, like I, uh, my oldest son, who's a senior in high school, he's doing all my video editing for me. Yeah, and buddy. I can't tell you how rewarding it is to work with your kids um, and, and be working on something together. Um, and yeah. I've never had a chance to really experience that, but it is, is deeply rewarding. Um, one of the other guys here has his daughter and his son working here, um, awesome. you know, and they're learning alongside and we're building kids we're yeah. building people. We're not just uh, yes. building a company, but we're doing both at the same time. So yeah, that's you right. can't do that if you're working for Amazon yeah. or like, right. hey, I'm going to hire my kid to be my assistant. They'd be like, well, no, right. that's not allowed. Right? Right. Um, and so, well, yeah, what, what, I, I love the way you're thinking about it. Like, you know, you don't yeah. want them to leave. Well, what, what should they stay for? Well, yeah, yeah. are you building a business together? Are you doing something great together? Or are you just, you know, yeah. trying to bide your time until you're dead? Yeah, do, yeah exactly. Do they have a future in your household? Um, you know, I look at the Proverbs 31 lady, I feel like, you know, looking at the woman in Proverbs 31, this is not like a, a, a gal who's just sitting around, you know, uh, doing the dishes and the laundry. Like she's, she's running an empire, you know, she has yeah. employees, she has a staff, she, she is, is doing business deals, uh, you know, acquiring real estate and taking products to market. And it's like, wow, do any of our households look that way? You know, like where, mm-hmm. where you've got. Um, uh, the wife, you know, is, is, is out there run is basically the COO of this kind of empire that, that, uh, mm-hmm. that she and her husband have built. And I think when you cast that vision, so many women have been indoctrinated that the most important thing to do is to like, be, be like a social media marketing lady for some, some f- nameless, faceless, you know, corporation. It's like, <laughs> right. that's going right. to be super fulfilling, not, not what the Proverbs 31 lady is doing. Like, yeah. it's that that's going to really bring you a lot of joy. And and it's it's a total lie. Um, 
but yeah, the 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 uh, the multi generational thing. The other thing about it, as you were talking about Red Balloon and the people that you've got working there, is is when it's your company, you get to kind of set the pace of mm-hmm. growth and uh, and and how aggressive you're going to be. And there's just seasons, right? I mean, there's seasons of harvest and there's seasons of of plowing and um, and sometimes there's seasons of kind of waiting um, in business. And and I don't think in the corporate rat race. It's like go 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 go. There's always a time horizon. We're always trying to show this this growth curve. Um, with my company, I was able to to tell our our board and our investors, hey, I'm I'm in this for the long haul. I'm not all that interested in trying to like sell this. And so, I, I want to make this company profitable. Um, I want to be faithful steward of it. Um, but the first thing we have to do is not take any risk they're so big that we would kill the company. And so right. let's let's be patient. Let's wait for our, our opportunity to to make a play. Sometimes you just have to be in the space for a while to, to sort of ascertain where your opportunity is. Um, but anyway, all of that to say, um, you know, there are – there's kind of a lifestyle component to your own business um, – when you're when you're kind of running the show to to be able to say hey we're we're going to do it this way we're not going to we're not going to just kill ourselves you know trying to meet um, these these crazy expectations all the time yeah absolutely it's you know it's controlling your own destiny and you still want to be super ambitious right yeah and, yeah right and and I, and I'm not saying that you're not right because um, we have a certain number of years on this planet. Yeah. Um, and we need to be using them to the maximum to glorify God, to raise good kids, to affect culture around us. Uh, and so I ha- always have this sense of urgency. Now I have the benefit of that sense of urgency can be on a housing development that I'm in the middle of or yeah. um, some of the commercial buildings that are in, and or being ambitious for your kids. Like yeah. instead of going and playing poker with a buddy, I'm going to take my daughter out for – um, out for dinner, right? And look for ways yeah. to be, um, you want to be ambitious. You want to push yourself. You just have the ability to choose what you're ambitious on, right? Are you on, yeah. you know, are you an elder at the church and are you really dumping into families? Are you doing things that really are going to have a huge right. long-term consequence? And so that's where you want the right. flexibility. So yeah, I would, I would agree. You don't yeah. want to, um, lose the ambition, um, you just want to make sure yep. you have the flexibility to be ambitious on the thing you think is most important. Yeah, that's right. No, I totally agree. And I, and I think um, I, I've kind of in my own life here in Alabama, I've kind of run myself ragged with with getting this church plant off the ground and and um, and a conference and and a bunch of different things that have been incredibly rewarding um, for me. There's not. I, I don't have like a huge bank account now because of all of that effort, but I've got this amazing community that my family that are my family is wildly blessed by. My kids are blessed by. There's probably future spouses now, you know, in in the picture at this church for my kids, which is delightful. Um, there there is something here to root my kids in in the place we live, um, which is amazing uh, to me. Um, huge huge blessing. Um, but yeah, the, the thing you said is, I think you were maybe alluding to, there's the, um, there's that, um, that story you hear of the farmer, you know, somebody seeing the farmer's sons out in the field, you know, harvesting the, the, the corn or something. And they said, what, you know, you guys are successful. Why, why do you, why are your sons out there harvesting the corn? Why, why don't you get one of your employees to do it? And he said, well, it's cause I'm raising sons. I'm not just raising corn. Right. And, uh, and and I think that's that's what we're talking about here is 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 I think um, there's supposed to be these three spheres of of like the state, the church, and the home, the household. And somehow in the last I don't know fifty years, hundred years, it's become the state, um, the the state, the church, the household, and and the company, right. you know, the corporation, the, the employer, yeah, right. And, and this thing has gotten bigger and bigger. Like the corporation part has gotten bigger and bigger and the state has gotten bigger and bigger and the, and the household is shrinking. Right. And I think what we're trying to do is, is encourage people to, 
to uh, reverse that trend? Well, the reality is that, you know, I moved to Moscow, Idaho for a church. Um, you know, you talked about the families that are moving down there to Alabama for a church, yeah. right? And when I tell yeah. most people, even in the Christian world, I move somewhere for a church or for a church community or for a Christian community, they're like, oh, that doesn't make any yeah. sense. But if you tell someone I had to move right. for a job, it'd be like, oh, yeah, of course, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, like, no sure. Deal. Um, yeah. And, and so I think that's where we've gotten our priorities a little out of whack, right? Because totally. um, the, the church and the family should be much more central to our lives than the job or and again the job is you know vocations are um, blessed by god and we should be working our tail off and not burying our talents in the ground Um, but we need to understand it is a job it's just a job Um, and it's an opportunity to bless other people and i will tell you if you start a business um, it's really fun because you have an opportunity to bless people in a way that you really can't in any other circumstance Uh, i've told a group of entrepreneurs before i'm like look um, sin doesn't usually just stay confined in one area. And so if you see laziness or anger or um, any number of sins in your employees, I guarantee those sins are wrecking their household. And so, But you yeah, have an opportunity sure. to speak into their life um, about that specific sin uh, because they're an employee, right? Yeah. Um, and so yeah. you can bless people in a way that even a pastor can't sometimes, right? Yeah. And so I would just encourage you, like, uh, I guess this is my final charge is like, um, it's hard to leave your cushy job and go do something else, but it is really, really important. Um, and it is yeah. enormously rewarding and money is not the point. Um, glorifying God is the point. If we remember our, our catechism. Totally. totally. Well, it, your, your, your actions speak louder than your words. Our kids are watching. Our kids are watching what we're doing. Yep. They're watching dad get up every day to go work for a company he he hates yep. and a job that he hates um because he likes the salary because 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 the salary is good and uh and staying in a crappy community or a bad church community or not you know not having the kinds of uh the kind of spiritual infrastructure that the family really needs um you know, sacrificing all of that for money and and i think uh I think we should be convicted by the fact that our kids are going to go and do likewise. They're going to watch. They're going to watch that pattern, and they're going to repeat it. And so the people, you know, I met a lot of them, you included, but a lot of people in Moscow who, who upended their lives uh, because they wanted to be a part of a healthy, thriving church community and and a, and a strong uh, uh, Christian school for their kids. And um, and th- I don't know. I don't know very many of those who would, who would ever go back and, mm-hmm. and say, you know, I, I wish I, I wish I had, I wish I would have stayed at the job and earned the extra, you know, 10 or 20 grand a year, right. you know, so I could right. It's like, no way, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you know, I will say, you know, everybody's circumstance is different. Um, so I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not trying to come and judge the person who is in a different spot than we are. Uh, but yeah. I do, I do think that, um, y'all should push yourself and the nice part is um, companies, organizations like Red Balloon are out there as your, uh, uh, you know, we, we got your back, right? If you yeah. decide that you need to stand up at work and say, no, I'm yeah. not going to bow to, you know, and, and don't think that vaccine mandates are the end of the road. Next, they're going to ask you to bow yeah. to bail um, and you need a yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego them. Um, and the good news is um, you might just be able to find a great job, a better job at redballoon.org. Yeah. So that's where I hope that I can... Um, help a lot of people out. Cool, man. Hey, Andrew, always fun to catch up with you, brother. Thanks for coming on the show and uh, wish you all the best in, uh, in your, all your various ventures. Um, let's stay in touch. People can, can find out more about red balloon dot, uh, at red balloon dot work yep. and even play the, uh, the, Land, uh, the pronoun, pronoun landmine landmine landmine. game. It's, it'll change awesome. your life or, and it will <laughs> at the very minimum offend all of your liberal friends. Awesome. Awesome. I can't 